Hello friends. Today in this video, we will learn how to work on Jupyter Notebook. But before that, I suggest you to create one working directory, one folder on your desktop. It will work as our working directory where all our Jupyter Notebooks, our work, our data sets, all will be stored over here. So I have created one working directory with Python work WD Python working directory on my desktop. Right now we have nothing in this folder, but I will save all my work and my data sets here. Why I'm doing this? Because this is a good practice to have a working directory because it is very easy to access your data and your data files and your data sets from Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so it will be easier for us later on. So create one folder with any name on your desktop. Now, so when we are connected to the cloud Anaconda Navigator, then we will go to Jupyter Notebook and launch. Click on this launch button. It will open in a browser. whatever your default browser is and here uh, my desktop is in OneDrive because this is Windows 11 so desktop I'll go to desktop in desktop I have my Python WD this is my working directory so I'll click on it now I'm inside my working directory that is Python working directory okay from here, right now we do not have any data files, data sets. So I will go to this click uh, new button, click on this and click Python 3. So this is my notebook. As we all know in my notebook, in our notebooks, we have lines, different lines. So these are our lines in this Jupyter notebook. Okay. So Right now, uh, this is untitled notebook. So double click on it and I will title this notebook as Python Basics and rename it. So Python Basics, this is my, this is the name of my workbook. Okay, so when I will save this file, it will be saved in my working directory, which I have already created in my desktop. If you see this, this rectangular box, this is called a cell. We write our program here. In Python, we will use OOPS concept, that is object oriented programming concept as well. And we do not need to declare variables here. Directly we can use in our cells, the variables, we, there is no need to declare them. Also we use Python because it is a cross platform uh, programming language. We can use Python on Windows, Mac, Linux, Unix, anywhere. Okay, so if I write something over here, let us suppose I write 4 plus 5. And I want to run this code, you can use this run cell as well, run cell button. or if you are using Mac, you can enter shift plus return. But if you are using Windows, then run shift plus enter. So I am executing this code 4 plus 5. So see, here we have the output as well. We received the output. That is 9. So now as we can see 1 over here. In input cell, we can see 1. So it's one line program. This is a very small program. But if we have a very long program, it might take some time to execute. And it will show asterisk over here. Instead of one, it will show asterisk. And when you see asterisk over here, it means your program is being executed. Once it is executed, again, you will get the sequence number of line on the basis of execution. Okay. And when you see any number, 
in this inside these square brackets it means program is executed uh, dear friends python is a case sensitive language here meaning of this a is equal to let us suppose 2 and small a is equal to 3 so both have different meaning if i run this cell shift plus enter and I want to check what value A, capital A holds. Run, I will get 2. If I run small a, run, I will get 3. Okay. So if I write 4 minus 5 and I run, I will get output minus 1. See, if I uh, in this cell, see this is input 4, cell 4 and output 4. But if I again execute it, this is input 6 and this is input 5. So these numbers are generated on the basis of sequence of execution. Which cell you have executed last time. So 5, 6. Now again, uh, if I do 4 divided by 5, if I run this, output will be 0.8. If I do, let us suppose 21, 5. Now, when you put double forward uh, slashes, it will give us the quotient. So, if we divide 21 by 5, this is the output, this is the quotient. And instead of this, if I use percentage sign. It will give me remainder. The remainder is 1. To multiply, I will write asterisk sign. I will use asterisk sign. Let us suppose 3. So output is 6. If I want the power of any number, let us suppose I want power of 2. So 2 times I will put asterisk and the power is 3. If I run this, the, uh, the output is 8. So, now discuss what are the data types we have. If I write A is equal to 5, in the next line of the same cell, if I write B is equal to, let us suppose, 5.4 and uh, C is equal to 5 plus 1x, 1m, let us suppose, d is equals to, hello, and e is equals to, true. So, what are these data types? If you want to insert any comment, you can put hash first and you can write anything it will not get executed it will be treated as a comment so i can write data types it will not get executed a is equals to 5 this is our integer data type B is equal to 5.4, it means it is float data type. This is our complex number. Okay. Where this M is imaginary right now. It means imaginary. So the out final value of C, it will depend on M as well. So this is the complex number. Hello, this is the string when used characters within double quotes. Okay, and this true is Boolean, or we can say logical value. Okay, so if I want to check.
student and did some mistake i think okay no issue so if i if i want to check what is the data type of any variable let us suppose i if i write uh, want to check the data type of a so what i'll type within bracket a so it will show you the data type of the variable a if i run this you will see it is integer as we have discussed already a is integer type and if you want to print the value in this variable you can use a very small function print a so it will give you the value it holds but if i want to see the data type of all we can do like this as well print type a i want data type of a then type b type c type d and type e by doing by doing this we will get data type of all the variables at a one go so if i run this now see integer then float then we have complex number then we have a string hello string and then we have classes boolean okay now if i want if i if i'm doing like this 2 plus 3 and in the next line i am writing plus 5 plus 6 so it will not work now we have two options either we give backward slash at the end of the first line like this backward slash so it will be treated as it will be treated as one line and the final output would be will be 6 plus 5 11 14 and 16 okay so so if i run this i will get this output we uh, use uh, different type of brackets like we have parentheses as well okay then we have braces or flower bracket and then we have brackets or you can say square brackets so uh we will also discuss when we have to use these brackets okay in the coming videos okay so try this till now and in the next video